Good morning. I'm getting started late today because I'm freaking tired. So as soon as little Timmy decides to come on in, come in. That reminded me of uh, I was going to say Jill Scott is not Jill Scott. She was long before Jill Scott. Good morning. Um, Diane Reeves. You know what? I kept it the day you were gone, hoping that you come in. Come, hey! <laughs> I was singing. I was singing you into work. What's up? Come in. What's up? What's up, boy? How you doing, babe? What's going on? Where'd that come from, little Timmy? That what? That was there yesterday, was it? I know, I know. It's detachable. <laughs> oh, it's kind of fly. It's for the old girls. I, I get this for the old broad. Yeah. I like the old broad. Put a little, you know put a little salt in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Welcome to the party. So. Oh, bro. <laughs> hey, Bree Bree. I was going to tell you um, I was running late. I'm sorry, but I know I said 1030. But we here. I'm tired. It's like Vegas wears you down. I ain't mm. even doing no real vegas -y stuff. I'm I'm just here. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, work. I, it's work. It's it's grind. Okay. So it requires thought. Good morning. Yeah, I heard Tiffany's go go song. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You like it, Bree? James Jamal, what's up, sir? How you Jamal, doing? what's up? Yeah. So what's going on, little Timmy? How was last night? What'd you do? I had a show last night at a little club in Baltimore. It was good. It was cool. It was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, because you're funny as fuck. That was, that was a good show. The crowd was great, too. Timmy, so the crowd was what great. happened? Tell me about the time you bombed. The time I bombed? Oh, I was yeah. in uh, Describe Virginia. Describe it. What was that like? I was in VCU, Virginia, Virginia uh, College in Virginia. Uh, yeah. I got I got standing boobation. They stood up and boo, 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 boo in waves. <laughs> I knew so. A dude in a wheelchair. They, they had a nigga in a wheelchair. They helped him up to boo me. They had, they had both his arms like this, just so he can boo me. Boo. It was boo, boo, and then, boo, boo. And then it's, and it's bad when the person in the crowd is funnier than you. Oh, so no. somebody was, some guy was cracking on me, and I couldn't, you know, yeah, so their crowd was laughing. They had, to, they had to walk me out. They had to walk my ass. They had to walk me out. Coley Singala, what's up, brother? Coley Singala is one of what about, Coley Singala is one of my mentors. How you doing, brother? Oh, He's one of my mentors. Wow. When I started, when I started comedy, he used to take me around with him all over, man. Great wow. guy. Wow, where is he now? Yep. Hey, Colton, where you at, sir? I don't know, man. I, I was trying to find him. great guy though, but that guy, he was one of my mentors. He he taught me everything I know. Nice. He really did. So good, good, yeah. good. Yeah, girl. I can, yeah, I bombed. I, I, let me tell you something. That wasn't the only time I bombed. I bombed at a church, too. You did? Yeah. It's Somebody yelled out, give them church Because they all Jesus-driven. I know. Like, like they they would be saying stuff to you just because, you know, you're doing yeah. Christian. Huh? I kept hearing, I kept hearing somebody talking about, that shit ain't funny. That shit ain't funny. I look over to the pastor. Like, <laughs> hey, you, <laughs> that shit ain't funny. Get this shit out of here. Little Timmy, that's that's what called you for. Yeah. Well, you know why? They got mad. At me. They got mad at me over a joke I did. I, I, it, was, it was a Baptist church, and I did a joke to say, um, "My father we used to always base our religion on stuff we didn't have. We ain't had no meat, or we Muslim. Then they'd be like, if we, uh, we had no Christmas, no Christmas, we Jehovah Witnesses. I stole money out of his wallet. He gonna say, uh, he gonna say, uh, why are you stealing money out of my wallet? I say, because we Baptist. And they were pissed off. They were, <laughs> <laughs> they were pissed. So you, they were heated you with said me. Uh, an anti-Baptist joke at a Baptist church event. Yeah, like still, yeah, pretty much. Girl, I'm telling you, I let me tell you something. 
I got banned from I, I got I got banned from uh the Masons. I got I, I can't do Mason shows no more like I used to. Oh, how you get banned from the Masons, Timmy? I'm a comedian. What happened was they was doing the dedication to all the Grand Masters, like Grandmaster Johnson who passed away, Grandmaster Charles. So yeah, I went on stage and said, you, so you know what I did? Exactly. I went on stage and said, yeah, uh, I want to give a dedicated to Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. That was all they wrote. They was like, we can't come back no more. They, I couldn't come they back no more. They, was, they, got, they can't take a joke? That shit is no, they funny. Was, that was, they that was like, so Grandmaster crazy. Johnson I passed away, Grandmaster Charles. That. I said, I'm going to give a dedication to my grandmaster, Grandmaster Flash, and it was done. Oh, so, Timmy, that's funny, though. I got I banned from them. The Masons that sensitive. Because yeah, they were sensitive. Because when you start to say Grandmaster, the first, everybody be like, is going to Grandmaster Flash, okay? Well, they ain't like that. They ain't like that. That's so. funny. They probably tried to get yeah. Grandmaster Flash to change his name. Let me tell you something. I'm not fucking with no Masons, though, okay? So all nah, the Masons out there... Don't get up in arms. We, it's just no. Nah, we're just joking. Like Them motherfuckers, they got hands, they got handshakes and calls. They they get into a, they, they get to, they get into a fight. They just yell out. Be fifteen mason around your ass. They got their own. They got their own everything. I don't play. I was gonna be a mason. I was gonna be a mason. Oh, you mason? Mason? Huh? Yeah, I was gonna be. I was. I was gonna be one. You were. I was. You can't be one now. Nigga. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna be one because that's why I think that book is. I'm like, shit, I'd rather read the Bible. Your book, you think? They got a thick book. I think they might book be like some, this thing read. The secrets. Don't be telling the Mason secrets. I don't need the motherfuckers trying to come kill me. That's like the feds and Big Mac. I don't want to know no more Mason shit. Okay. <laughs> uh uh. I I like the Masons. Masons might be me hooked too. up with the Illuminati. What's up, Travis? Mm -mm. What's up, Travis? Thank you. Like and share this feed, everybody. Listen, um, Nipsey Hussle's sister, Samantha, is trying to get custody of his seven-year-old, his eldest daughter. Seven-year-old, sure, honey. Uh, I don't know what's happening with that, but she claims, you know, it's, it, that the mother is unable to care for the baby now that Nipsey is gone. I don't understand that because... Why wouldn't he have, you know, left stuff for her to be cared for like he did his other children? You know, and I found out the sad part is she found out the um, Nipsey Hussle, Hussle uh, baby mama. She found out on social media that she was trying to get custody. Nobody, nobody even came and told her. She found out on social media like everybody else. What? So they didn't even they tell died? her. No, that she was trying to get, that she was trying to gain custody of her daughter. What? You know what I mean? The, 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 yeah, they didn't even tell her. They, so, you know. How do you not Who tell somebody her, before you go to social what media? What makes her think they're going to give her custody over the mother? Why know. in the universe? I wonder, I thought the mother was, you know, with it. I didn't I didn't know that it was, a, you know, like I'm just taking your baby kind of move. I don't know. Right. We need more information on this one. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm smart. I told my kids, I break, I break up with, I told my kids, I break up with your mother. Ain't no choice. You going with your mother. Don't, y'all ain't no choice. To do. <laughs> don't, don't even, don't even say to the judge, I want to live with my daddy. Don't y'all do it. Nope. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't say you want to live with your daddy. You going with your mother automatically. Wow. That's so, nice. so, I don't know. Yep. See. Let me see. Uh, we got some some information on this. So Nipsey has custody and the sister was the main caregiver. Okay. So okay. the daughter was with Nipsey. The mother wasn't apparently um, raising the baby directly. Wow, I get it now. It makes more sense. So now, so now yeah, so the thing is she probably will get it now. She was already a caregiver. Well, right. she might she might have been a caregiver because she was closest to Nipsey, but she's not the mother. So, right. it might be an issue. So, the girl, um, I don't know. I guess she wanted it to be legal. I understand that. I understand that completely because when you lose uh, somebody who is a parent and the offspring is left, a lot of times people come because it's a money grab. I'm not saying that's the case in this case with right. a mother, 
the real mother because if she wasn't raising the daughter and she knew that uh, Samantha was caring for the child all this time while Nipsey was alive, shouldn't have been. It, sh it really shouldn't be an issue. She knows the little girl is cared for. So I don't know. Right. I don't know. Right. Hopefully it won't be a battle. Hopefully it'll be a smooth transition and won't be no bullshit. Either way, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but it always is when somebody dies. What is Jamon saying? Jamon said, if you don't answer your phone, social media will send you the message. Social media is the telephone. Okay, that must be for the last thing. Okay, so that's, that's you know, that's it for the Nipsey thing. I don't want no, I don't want the Nipsey people, the, the nippers to come fucking with me. <laughs> you know, they go crazy, man. You say some shit, anything, Nipsey or anti-Nipsey or any of that, like they ready to kill you. I think I, I don't think they found Kodak Black yet. I <laughs> know. Uh, he gone, ain't it? They done, they done killed his ass. Truth is, he that done. was gone before he left though. He, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Kodak, he should be Kodak multicolor. That nigga look crazy as fuck. <laughs> he, he look crazy as hell, don't he? Polar Kodak boy. black and shit. They took his Kodak, Kodak status. Name's Kodak black and shit. Yes. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Warren? Yeah. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I got all these dudes what, out here getting all this. What is talking about? Who whose father out here getting ten girls pregnant? Ashanti. What? You gotta give us more on that. I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, you, you can't just say that? something like that. Yeah, that, that guy there. Uh, no, nah, I ain't nothing about that. I ain't heard nothing about that. Y'all like Jamal that? got that guy there. Jamal, Jamal got Tourette's. With his Jamal story. got it. Jamal, Jamal got social media to rest. That nigga just yell out shit. He got somebody pregnant. Then he go back to something else. You know she ain't living like he's supposed to. That nigga, that nigga got, he got <laughs> social right, media man. to rest. Brandy said, you got to be careful with Nip. I ain't fucking with him. No, but no. It, it is news. It is news. We we not talk about it. <laughs> he said it's all over the web. What? What is all yeah, over what? the web? Ashanti, somebody pregnant at 10? Ashanti's father got somebody pregnant? What are you saying? What are you she saying, boy? <laughs> yeah. Are you, I ain't hear nothing about that. Have you? No, nah, I ain't hear nothing about that. All I know is I keep hearing all these damn drug dealers yelling at one drug. Who wants to smoke a drug called Game Over? That's the name of the new drug today. The Dope Fiends. Game the Over? Dope you, fiends. you are going to die you smoke anything called Game Over. That's what they want. Shit. Nigga yelling, game over, game over. I'm like, nigga, game over. That's the name of your drug. All the names out here. You can't make this shit smiley face or Listen, happy emoji. Had, when, when the sniper, remember the sniper was out there? Yeah. had something about the DC sniper. They called the package. One one package was called um, John Hinckley, the motherfucker who shot Reagan. <laughs> they they named it after killer shit. It's crazy. I love the name of I know. Oh wow! Okay, so Jamon, I don't know what you're talking about, Ashanti, but I see a white guy. It says stepfather rapes and impregnates his ten-year-old daughter. Pro-life protects baby from abortion. Pro-life people be doing way too much. They way do. too much. If you get a ten-year-old pregnant and um, it's rape. Anybody pregnant and it's rape. Right. You need to I, I, I ain't getting into that pro life thing, you know. I don't I don't know what that's about, Jamal. We gotta talk about that tomorrow. Because I don't, I don't, mm -mm. on that. I see I see different stories, but it doesn't look like um it doesn't look like what you said. I don't see nothing saying Ashanti. So I'm not fucking with her. You don't want to put that out. You damn sure don't put that out there like that. Yeah. Don't put that shit out there. Not like a 10-year-old child, though. Who the hell? I mean. Okay, so Big Dale sent me something. He said, singer Shanti's father, Thomas Douglas, allegedly impregnated an 11-year-old. Three oh times. God. Three times. So I don't, how do you even get away with something like that? Pregnate somebody three times? Oh no, oh no! That's, that's just ridiculous. That's just 
You know, that's nasty and ridiculous. He's like, mother, let's see if we can hear. Let's see if we can hear. Let's uh, Kincaid, who we're going to refer as Kincaid, who is Ashanti's father, the singer, and uh, his wife, Tina. Now, yeah. I want you to start from the beginning. Take your time. No rush, okay? When you reached out to me, I didn't expect you to unload as much as you, as much as you unloaded during our first phone call. Hmm. And it was a relief for you. And we've had, like I said, we've had a few conversations um, between that time. And I know this hmm. has been very hard for you to come forward to put your story out there. And so I just kind of want to give you the floor to start from the beginning on how it is that you came in contact with Ashanti's father, Kincaid, and his wife, Tina. Hmm. Okay. How I came into contact with um, both of them was, Tina was um, a dance instructor for the Glen Cove Boys Club. Um, and I started going to dance school there. I was in her dance class. Um, she had several groups. She had the little ones from like I think six to Okay, nine, so eight. let me let me just preface uh, this by yeah. telling you this is the exclusive uh story about Ashanti's father allegedly impregnating uh Thomas his name is Thomas Douglas, allegedly impregnated an eleven year old girl. So the story was broke on Unwind with Tasha K. Tosh K is the same uh, place or outlet that we heard, you know, the infamous he licked my ass about Kevin Hunter and the dude who said right. Kevin came licked his ass and fucked him in the butt for three seconds. So that's what we're listening to. Let's hear because I haven't had, I haven't heard it. So we listening together, y'all. We're going to listen for a minute, and then we're going to chat about it. And then there was like this, 10, 12, 13, teens to the teenagers, and she had a few older ones. I was in a little girls group at that time. And um, I joined her group, and he was always with her all the time when we had dance class, and he would sit in with the little kids. And when you say he, you're talking about King K, the Shanti's father, King K, right? Yes, King okay. K would sit in with the little kids, you know, and he, you know, play with us and tickle us and toss us around. He was always very friendly with the kids. You know, Tina was always very friendly and loving to her girls, you know, but he always was around the little kids. For some reason, I don't know why I was the one taking liking to so much, you know, as one of her students, but she looked at me as one of her little protégés. That I was a good dancer, and she always believed in me and always told me that I was going to be a good dancer and things like that. But he still always sat underneath the little kids. So as I got a little older, like about, I say around about eight, nine years old, Tina started taking me around with her, like, took me underneath her wing. You know, and she became more like a big sister figure or like a mother figure. You know, treating me very well. Sounds a little suspect. Sounds suspect to me too. Yeah, good team, Jamal. And um, then he started taking me places like, "Oh, I'm gonna take you over to the house to see Tina." She didn't mind, you know, because he was always bringing me to her. And how old were you at the time? I was at the time. She started taking me underneath her wing. I could say after about nine, ten years old, she started like doing little things for me, like um. Buying me little clothes and little sneakers and stuff because I didn't have the best. Okay, so this sounds like she's coming to us as the person who was molested. Yeah, like she, she, she said she found. I Man, is it her? Was she was she was she, was, was she the one molested? She got older now. She's telling her story. She's Dale telling her story now. Now, <laughs> how I'm does fifty sound, nigga? <laughs> that dude got your words, like, uh, uh, but um, wow. they always reassured my mom that they would look out for me. You know, at least she did. You know, he was very cunning, you know, to my mom and stuff like that. And um, and again, we're talking about Kate. Okay. And this, just to be clear, just in case anyone is confused, this happened around what time? Oh, well, this is in the 70s. Okay. All right. So go ahead and pick up from... Okay. In the 70s when they had a track in the car. Okay. That's, that's how far back. And back then, no one told you... You know, if anyone touched you the wrong way or anything to come to me and tell me, you didn't grow up 
when I didn't grow up in a time when they used to tell people that, you know. So I didn't know when he first started touching on me what it was. Jamal says she mm -hmm. sounded you know? like a cigarette. And when was the first time he touched you, <laughs> Kincaid? Say that again. When was the first time Kincaid touched you? The first time he touched me, I was like nine. He was feeling me up, but I didn't know that's what was going on. It was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. My hand didn't mean to touch your private. You know, oh, I'm sorry. My hand didn't mean to touch your chest. You know what I'm saying? So you didn't look at it as anything out of the norm. And this took place at the dance studio, correct? Um, it, it was called the um, Lincoln House back then, the Glen Cove Lincoln House. Okay. Where okay. all the kids you went are. and they had like a little daycare in there too. and all that stuff. Okay. You know, and, um, a boxing ring, and that's where everything basically, like, started. Then, um, oh, God, this is... Dale said Ashante was still in her father's nest. She was. She was. She wasn't even born yet. So, okay. the story is... Oh, she was in her Oh, but she wasn't happy when she was in the 70s, in the 70s. He went his way, and he started getting close to my sister. What'd you say, Timmy? Happened back in the 70s, right? And then what she said? She said it happened back in the 70s. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't want to discount anything having to do with molestation or any no. of that stuff. Molestation is a very serious thing. Right. And yeah. basically, more will be revealed. Let's just say that. Because yeah. I don't know. It, it, you know, this lady, if you, if you go online, you'll see her. She looks she she looks regular. She looks unassuming. My question in this case, as in most cases, you know, and I get, like, how do you impregnate an 11-year-old child and... Three times, though. Three times. Let's go with three times. I want, Three times? Who cover, Who's covering that up? Somebody had to cover that up. The parents or somebody. Yeah. Who's fact-checking that? Why now? Yeah. So what happened with the you baby? Know? Exactly. <laughs> Jamon said, oh, excuse me, my bad, my fault, molester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Timmy, I, I don't know. Look, one day I, you was nodding, Timmy. I was. <laughs> said, I got, look, did you somebody smoked that. Game over. Game no. over for that nigga. I tell you what, no. if, if it's not true, it's true. It's not true. If it's not true, it's going to be true until they prove it's not. That's the unfortunate part about our justice system. You are, despite what they say, you are guilty until proven innocent. Well, let me ask you a question. That's what is the motivation? Thing. What is the motivation? Why did she wait so long to tell her story? That's my question to a lot of women. Why do a lot of women wait till these guys get high positions and then say, oh, you know, back in 1982, he touched me? I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, why do they do that? Yeah, what is the motivation I'm, to come I'm, out now? Is, right. this, is this like a Me Too play? Uh, right. I, I don't know. I don't know. But, but I don't, it's you, crazy. You can't say you're scared. But it, it, something happened when you were when you were back in '82, and then all of a sudden I become a famous star. Now you say, well, you know, back in this, uh, uh, Timmy Hall touched me inappropriately. What is your motivation? All, all of a sudden now because I made it, now you, that, that you may you may get some money from me. Now you decide to hey. I mean, I, this is what it, it makes me mad because if you if something happens like that, you I can understand you're traumatized. But why wait so long? You wait forty and fifty years later to say, "Hey, remember what I did?" You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm, I, I don't know. I can't. I don't know if it happened or not. I don't know. I, I don't know. know. It sounds a little suspect. Um, you know, I'm sure Tasha K might have did some fact checking before she she aired this on right. her program because she has a large viewership. So the I don't know. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. But I, I can't like, say. I'm sorry. I can't see. How you impregnate an eleven year old three times? Obviously, three times. She was older the other two times. But how you start fucking an eight year old and nobody knows? You know, like this is another like these parents letting their kids go with people and stay with people and shit like that. Like you got yeah. you got kids of your own. What the fuck you want to take my kids for? You know. Look at R. Kelly. You let the kids stay over there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make you a star and send the kids over there. And then my thing is, well, R. Kelly, what makes me mad? Any real father, we always say, if anybody touch my daughter, I kill her ass. Where are those guys at? 
Where those mm-hmm. guys? These guys, all yeah. these women that R. Kelly messed with, where the fathers ready to kill us, man? Where they at? Somebody tell my daughter, believe me, I'll be ready to kill them. Mm-hmm. Point blank. Point blank. <laughs> Bradley. Bradley said, Nikki, get it out right now. Who touched you? <laughs> Jim Brown. <laughs> this is the problem, though. This is the problem. Nikki was trying to get people to touch her. That's the problem. I know. That's the problem. Don't touch me. Don't you touch uh-huh. me. I know, Don't Nikki, you saying, touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, had, Nikki had nipple rings when she was six. She, had, she, was, she was six years old with nipple rings. <laughs> that was, that was, that's the problem with Nikki. Nikki was trying to get molested. She I wasn't was. She was. Enough. Fuck you. That's the problem with Nikki. You don't know my life. <laughs> Everybody you don't know my needs life? a little comfort. No, I'm, I'm, you know, me and Timmy, we just fucking around, y'all. We do not make light of molestation. Oh, I don't. We I don't. Do find I find think... humor in every situation. And You're a molester. Kill yourself. Why well, kill you? What the end game is here? Cause she's saying she was molested. Is there a statute to limitation? There. Here's another. Here's yeah, another police question, nigga. That yeah, I know you yeah, probably yeah. don't know right off. Yeah. The top. Yeah, it's a statute of limitation. I'm t- when I when I find out what that means, I tell you. What is statute of limitation? They got a statute. It's a statute. Oh, oh it's a statute named limitation. He that, uh, ain't that down there? Ain't that down there? Um, by the museum, by all the museums. It's a statute it's of limitation. The is that the Smith? Yes, yeah, it's the Smithsonian. Right statute of limitation. Right down the street yeah. from the Martin Luther King statue. <laughs> It's called limitation. <laughs> yeah, limitation. Statue. Uh, no Jamal keys in the fourth grade. I had 32 A's, nigga. I know. A's. I had yeah, everybody else A's. A's. Yeah, whatever. Well, everybody, mm-hmm. everybody else in the third grade had breasts. Nikki had titties. <laughs> everybody <laughs> had breasts. She had titties. Good titty, baby. I know. I swear to God. But yeah, but. No lie, man. It's just, I mean, yes, it's not your limitation. She can't, she can't prosecute the man now. How you going to prove it? Well, ask, ask Bill Cosby. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's true. That's ask true. Bill Cosby. You know, we, we living in an age where, you know, the proof is the last thing they looking for. You know, they taking these, they taking accusations, 50-year-old accusations and making, building yeah. cases Around, I got a problem with that. I, I, I got a problem with that because any, anybody can be accused of anything as a man. Anybody can be accused. I mean, you can you can have a woman that don't like you as a boss or whatever. Your boss, she don't like you. Oh, he touched me inappropriately, or he uh, you know, he said something that I didn't like, or I felt uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Man, please, you can't say shit to a woman now. That's why you gotta learn sign language. You can't say shit to a woman. You say a girl one bad deal. You, know, you mm-hmm. can't say shit to a woman now. I, how do you meet women nowadays with all everything? Everything now is so sensitive. You can't even compliment a woman. Yeah, I tell a woman straight up. I, this is what I do. How you doing, Miss Lady? You look just like shit. That's, <laughs> how, that's my way of saying you look good. That's my way. That's my way of telling you look good without without having any charges against me. Hey, how you doing? Fine. You look just like shit. So now you can't say nothing. You gotta tell a woman. You gotta tell a woman. You gotta tell a woman the opposite of, of everything nowadays, just to make sure, just to get. You know what I mean? I, I don't, you know, I don't want to have sex with you, right? I just, I don't know. I don't want to do that. You look like shit. I don't even. You look like shit. Yeah. But that's all that means is. Your ass looks like a pregnant woman. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look terrible. Huh? All that means is you bad as hell, and I want some. Look, you. Oh. Okay, it would fuck you if we weren't in the age of me too. Exactly. Oh my God! Look at you. Just mm-hmm. hard. Do you, th- do you no. think you look good today? <laughs> I oh, love pretty I, women. I like it. I got something funny that I want us to touch on real quick. Now we don't do politics, Tim, because we 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 just no. stop. We don't give a. We not that smart. We not that we smart. Not smart. Okay, but, I was gonna say because we stupid, but I, I decided not we, to. Do. We stupid as shit. I don't know, no, my pop. We just we oh we don't know nothing else. We don't know Senate. We don't know. All we know is Trump and it's Barry. Right it's all we know. The statue, the statue limitation. Yeah, I can't. Uh, hashtag, I'm going to write that. Hashtag statue limitation. Down at the Smithsonian. Stand in Baltimore. Stand in Baltimore. Down at the Smith. Down to the Smithsonian. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, but 
I have to talk about this because this is funny to me. So, uh, Representative Congressman Steve Cohen, he is, uh, what, what state does Steve represent? I forgot what, Tennessee? He's, he's, he, he's the congressman for Tennessee. So this clown, this stupid ass hole in the bush nigga comes to uh, Congress and makes a joke that backfired terribly about um, the guy, uh, William Barr. Remember William Barr who was testifying yeah. uh, for, before the Attorney General? Anyway, he had a second day, but he didn't come. Right. So Congressman Cohen thought it would be a good idea to bring props to make his point. So this clown goes and gets a bucket of chicken. Okay? A bucket of chicken and goes in. He says he put the chicken up like a figurine in the seat where Barr would have been sitting had he shown up, right? If he had, okay, so he said if he had the stones, if he had the stones to show up, he said, he said, <laughs> Cohen went further, bringing the, the bucket of KFC to really drive his point home. He started handing out chicken pots to fellow representatives and other congressional staffers, and then turned to Congresswoman Val Demings from Florida, who's black, and mm -hmm. says, you got to watch the video because it's hilarious and a little cringeworthy. Well, that's what they're saying. But Cohen looked directly at Val, drumstick in hand, and offered it up like here. So the, the joke was he was trying to convince these people like that this joke about choking the chicken, choking the chicken, it, which is what he said. Like, I guess it's a euphemism for being afraid. I thought choking the chicken was you gotta pee, right? So he right. he used it in, in the context of this guy chickened out. Right? Oh yeah. So okay. he he comes, so he comes to the goddamn uh floor with this bullshit. The white people are so stupid. And and really, the joke backfired on his ass. The joke really got him in a lot of hot water now. So you guys can go look at that yourself. But I just you know, had, I had to mention it, because yeah. what the fuck? But you know what some niggas sitting there talking about, I can't wait to get around to me. <laughs> Hope they got some breast left. <laughs> I'm, you, I'm, know, this, this you, know, you know, this hearing goes long. You know, some niggas talking about, I ain't eat breakfast today either. This nigga bringing chicken. This nigga bringing chicken. He's so thoughtful. You know what I mean? You know, you, you, you might have been offended, but you been. Damn. He is from Tennessee. Yeah, damn. But yeah, you know. I mean, white hey, people do know, that sometimes. They do stupid ass things. But he did. Yeah, but they do shot. stupid shit. We do stupid shit sometimes. They do, they do stupid ass jokes like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, like I know a uh, white person, right? You know, they always try to tell me racial jokes. What's the one n word white people don't like to call black people? I said, What he said, my neighbor said, You know, they always say stupid. Shit. They always say <laughs> stupid. I thought it was funny as hell, though. But I was, they well, always the white say people giddy as shit about it, though. The white people laughing at everything because they they you know find it funny. But you have to, like, we we in a, a, a age in society, I actually think it's kind of funny, too. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Fucking the shit chicken. is funny. And the fact that that nigga bombed is equally as funny, you know, that it fell flat. Because I was I've been more watching right. Right. to see the look on him and his staffer's face to see how fucking mortified they were, right? Because, you know, like, when you bomb and you think you will kill him, and you get out there and that shit don't go well. Like, huh? it's a death yeah. sentence. Now, you know what? He looks like you. You got to see him. He looks like uh, what's the what's the um fire what's not fire marshal bill? Yeah, fire marshal bill. You know how he had oh, yeah, that right? hair and shit. That he was. That's how that <laughs> motherfucker looked. Now imagine fire marshal bill on the Senate floor passing out chicken and shit, <laughs> or the Congress. You know. He was um, he was fucked up. He fucked up. Whatever. I'm gonna go back been, and watch been, you know, three my four black, times. Whatever. Huh? My black ass been like this. Oh, he gonna run out when he get to me. God damn. This bitch Shit, got my way. 
You would holler out. She don't want it. I'll take hers. She don't want it. <laughs> you ain't got no coach, no? Nah. <laughs> don't worry, you Congress got... woman. I got I you. I'm here for you. Wow. You know, I love black people, though. We always get mad at chicken joints, but we love fucking chicken. We, it I, ain't a lie, though. I know we, but we always give that. Every time you talk about, we talk about black people love chicken. We do. We love chicken. You can't go nowhere. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You can't go no goddamn cookout where somebody get some hip hop chicken. I hate that shit. Nigga, always in there doing something. I'm going to bring the hip hop chicken. That's mm -hmm. all. We, we love chicken. Hip hop chicken. That is the nastiest shit I've ever tasted. First of all, the wings about the size of a pinky. That's a, that's a, that's a you eat you eat chicken penis. That's what you eat. You that's eat chicken that penis. That's what that is. You got to be careful. That's, it is who, what chicken you eat nowadays because they they are doing all kinds of stuff modifying these fucking chickens because black people love chicken. The fucking chickens ain't even chickens no more. Chickens with eight wings and stuff. Crazy. Wait, where where is it? What? Where, where that went? Where that chicken at? I eat the fuck out of him. He yeah. went off one day. Well, you probably have eaten it, nigga. <laughs> you probably oh, have eaten it. Oh, well, nigga. You're going to, every time you go to one of them AFC spots, you're eating it. I care yeah, less. We, we you not going to stop me. There's a couple more things that I wanted to touch on, but what is going on with them locking up all the goddamn rappers? So, you know, Offset got, got a warrant issue because he had gotten into it with a fan. Somewhere, some oh, really? kid was like, what's up, Offset? And Offset went off on him and shit. I don't know what happened. He, uh, the dude was talking to him on his phone, and Offset was like, get the fuck out of my face and smack his phone on the phone. You know, bro, fuck that. You can't I do that. Albie, I broke Albie Shore's phone, nigga. You just broke Offset. Yeah, you broke a nigga that ain't been around since, since 1992. And shot yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. shot That part is. He so broke, he still ain't got a phone. It's almost been a week. This nigga phone still broke. Anyway. So how about the fact that the phone, the dude's iPhone, he said the iPhone calls it look like the iPhone. Yes, it's, I guess it's the latest one. He's saying the iPhone costs $800, so now that's a felony. Yeah. So oh, 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 because he broke a phone? Yeah. I know what's the name, bro. Because he smacked the boy's right. phone out of his face and it broke. And what's the name? He so, turned herself in. Remy Ma, you hear about Remy Ma turned herself in? Remy Ma That's sad, man. turned herself in. That's the other thing I want yeah. to talk about. I'm saying, what the fuck? So what What did Remy do? Somebody, the, the girl, her coach was talking about her family, was talking about her stepdaughter. And I don't know if she got, she assaulted her or something. And the girl waited and got a, got a warrant for her ass or some shit. And she had turned herself in. You okay, come back, little Timmy, come back. Little Timmy froze, y'all. I really wanted to hear what, what he was getting ready to say next because it seemed like something that we all might have been interested in. Perhaps not. Damn. I want to know what happened with me. Yeah, I'm at. Yeah, I'm at. Hold on. You know you were gone all this time, Timmy. Little Timmy, you weren't here. Yeah, Little Remy Ma. You was like, Keep I, I, don't, I don't like that look. That's um, what you was doing, nigga. Both four motherfuckers on the feast stop bashing the screen with they dick. <laughs> you you like saw, if you see how high my gas logic was. <laughs> Cable so bill. Tell me, tell me about gas and logic. Again. What happened? She apparently got into it with a co-host or something on some show. And uh, about the girl was talking about her stepdaughter, which is a uh, Papoose daughter. And she got, uh, you know, she got offensive and so I, you know, I guess they she assaulted the girl, and, and the girl knows Remy Ma got a history of going to jail, you know, because she shot somebody. So I guess she used that against her and got a warrant for arrest. You know what I mean? Listen, I don't know. People need to leave people alone, but the thing is, that's why you got to get security when you when you reach a certain level in this game, because motherfuckers are trying people just for the come up. You know, like oh yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I put my hands on anybody. It would depend on what the fuck they doing. It ain't it yeah. ain't because they said nothing. If I'm if I'm filthy stinking rich or just kind of rich, you know, if I'm getting yeah. a check or a motherfucker perceives that I have a, the bag, you know, you you gotta be careful. You can't let people get too close to you because of no, that kind can't. of stuff. You can you can defend yourself and still get sued. You know what I'm saying? You can, but if you can prove it nowadays on social media, that motherfucking case ain't going nowhere. If you hit me first, 
That's it. That's it. But some some cities ain't no self defense law, you know, or self defense is not, um, you know, it's not, it's not. What is it? What am I trying to say? Self defense is not. I don't know. Legal defense. Legal defense. God damn it. I told you. Keep it simple. Stop trying to use big words. You always try to use statute of limitations. Keep it just simple. <laughs> yeah, damn. You always try to use them I'm big words. The you know, we ain't, should, no, ain't no more. We should take a trip and go to the Smithsonian and just <laughs> go ask all the Smithsonian workers to direct us to the statute of limitations. Let's see what happens. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we should. Let's we should do it. do it and just film it. Yeah, we let's film do it. it. We trying to find the statute of limitations. Could you please tell me where to find it? Get some of the motherfucking summer interns. They'll be looking. Yeah. You know, white kids. <laughs> Even that would be some old dude with all. Be some old dude with Alzheimer's and working security. He think he really know where he's at. Uh, let me think. Is that one of that the That might be ones? uh. Oh, they're, 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 it's old security now. I can tell you where to find this. Goodbye. What's the name of the dope? Oh, that, that, oh, that, that game over. I can tell you where to find game over. I <laughs> see. I was that last time. George. George. You see game over. <laughs> you seen the I was a... limitation. <laughs> I think it's that new when they put down town. It Go down old dude, Third you know. Street. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris said that's not. Uh, he said that's not self defense. That's reverse assault. I don't understand how that's reverse assault. What the fuck is that? Is that a thing? Reverse assault? Have you ever heard that, yeah. Officer Timmy? First of all, stop asking me legal questions. And reverse assault. <laughs> if I get punched, I just roll the window up. Somebody hit me in my face, I just roll. Up. <laughs> I'm getting involved for. You punch me, I just roll the window up. <laughs> and I'll be calling me. That was a good punch. You use all your fists. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got to get out of here, little Tim. All right, Tell the people where you going to be this weekend again. I'll be in Durham, North Carolina this weekend, Friday, Saturday with Chris Paul. Sunday, I'll be with Ray Dijon in Brooklyn, New York. We'll be showing my man Sean Harvey in Brooklyn. So, be a busy weekend. Y'all keep Harvey. up with Lil Timmy uh, at Comic Cop 2 on Instagram and uh, TimmyHall.com for other details. Uh, follow us here. And I'm at Nikki Moore Funny on Instagram. We here each and every weekday morning talking about anything and everything and mostly nothing. <laughs> mostly nothing. Not, we, we, don't we don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. You can't talk about shit when you don't know shit. We don't know shit. You can't. Look at, uh, what's the black motherfucker that ran for, for uh, president? What's his name? The, the goofy You mean Trump. <laughs> you mean Trump, first of all. Let's get him out the... He, he ran on no shit either. We don't know shit. Uh, Why we got no shit? We should have to know shit. See, if if your president don't know shit, we don't know shit. Let's call, call Roland Martin. Roland got answers. We don't have no answers. Y'all, I got another thing that I did want to say here. Our black news media is very important. Now, I do know that. And the, the, the news that Roland Martin reports is very important for us because, right. as you know, media shapes our, our society and, for many of us, our thoughts and the shit that we believe, okay? Just like uh, being guilty until proven innocent. All of that stuff is, is, is uh, shifted and shaped by the, by the media. So it's important that we have and support black news outlets. Go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com and subscribe to his fan page and donate $50 a year and support that news outlet. That's not a lot of money. Yeah, the important. money we spend on bullshit in this economy will, will level nations and raise nations. So instead of spending $50 at the next bullshit uh, outlet and find the latest Nike, put $50 on supporting uh, responsible black media, okay? This is black media that's unshaped by, by popular society, and he's telling mm -hmm. our stories in our voice. He's telling the real stories, okay? And it's important. So if you can uh, support a network for $50 a year, 
Let's help. Let's help. Put your money where your mouth is. Don't talk about it. Be about it. $50 ain't a lot of money for nobody. If you can afford to be on this motherfucker, you got $50. Support Roland Martin Unfiltered because he's telling the news for us about us and by us. This is where we get in the real stories, you know? Like CNN, just today, he talked about how CNN and uh, companies like um, the the uh, movie houses in Hollywood have zero black executives. Zero. Mm -hmm. I mean, on every level. And I personally have an experience with this. I got to find the statute limitations before I can go into <laughs> it. Because I ain't trying to pay the crackers nothing. Fuck you. Okay, and and when I say cracker, it's not a racial term. It's not a racist term. It's still it ain't nigga. No, it let me ain't. Tell you what I mean? Just like I okay. say, nigga, it's black crackers. Okay, what I'm talking okay. about is right. motherfuckers who will put their foot on your neck simply because they can, and there there's yeah. no real valid reason why we shouldn't be getting equal pay for equal work. We shouldn't be qualifying for jobs that we are qualified for simply because of the color of our skin. And we shouldn't be leaders in, in economies and in, in, in businesses that shape our economy. So uh, a news outlet like CNN to not have any blacks in leadership, a company like, who else were they talking about? Several companies. If you start, if you start examining some of the leadership and these media outlets and these major corporations and shit like that, if you're a publicly traded company or a company with 3,000 plus or several hundred employees, mm -hmm. there's no fucking reason that we shouldn't be represented. Every, every aspect of them should not be represented in leadership. Right. Okay? So right. when, when we talk about uh, becoming the president of um, a major media outlet or a major corporation that we shape with our fucking dollars. We work for less money and spend it all on their ass or with them, okay? On bullshit. Support black news. Rolling Martin unfiltered $50 a year, some bullshit and some short shit. Throw that shit in there just in case that nigga got a point. You know what I'm saying? Let's just support it. Let's show the value of our real economic dollars now. I don't know. It wasn't planned. I didn't intend to go on this tangent. But what I'm right. saying is, if 10 of us would do it, just 10 of us, imagine the reach. Imagine the reach. And everybody who knows Roland Martin know that nigga is fearless. Okay? He's fearless. He does not base the stories that he tell on what's popular or good for him. Most of the time, it's some shit that ain't good for him, which is why we got to support Roland Martin Unfiltered and not yeah. watch Roland on TV. There was not another news program like his, ever. And there hasn't been since. So we need to support him so that we can help to shape the stories that are being told. We can teach our children what, what's really happening. We can tell each other and learn from people who look like us about us. You know, white people have been deciding for us for a long time who we are, what we should know, and how we know, you know, what we can do. That should be no longer, okay? We living in the age of Me Too, Me Too, motherfucker, on the news, okay? So, all of that <laughs> is all I got you to say me? about that. God damn. God damn, Rosa Parks. Shit. Ain't nothing to say. <laughs> you mean, you got me more. I'm, I'm going to make a change right now. Get off the corner. The nigga just told me no. I'm good. <laughs> I thought uh, I changed that day. I fucking die. I get rolling 50. I ain't, I ain't doing that shit. Look, I know Dale is going crazy. He's like, fuck, get off of that. Get off of that. Fuck it. What are you running for? I got to out the big Dale, our, our super producer. One day y'all going to see him. Be like, Shelly, go you know, to my iPad. You be like, you know, Nick. <laughs> what the fuck are you running for? You running for, well, you know, you got it. You know, you're a thick girl. You, you walking for Senate? You ain't running for Senate. You walking for Senate. <laughs> what you walking for Senate? <laughs> I'm looking for the statue limitation, nigga. God damn, girl. You made me want to go out here and make some change. Go get a, you make me want to go get a divorce and start my life all over again. <laughs> I'm like, why you divorcing me? Nikki said so. Nikki said you ain't shit. And give Roland Martin $50 while you at it, bitch. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Roland Martin unfiltered. Filter.com. Okay. Support them. Do yes, it. Let's get guy. the stories Your out brother. there and let's get more like them. Okay? Yeah. So, 
Timmy, we gotta get out of here. I'm I'm still on the left coast, so that's why we okay. came a little early, a little late to y'all this morning. So right, the goal right. is tomorrow's Friday. No, you can't. We we late because you're too busy writing that goddamn speech you just said. That's the fuck that was. <laughs> You was in there right there writing a speech. That totally impromptu. God damn, that, that shit had me ready to cry. I'm like, you know what? This world ain't shit. You got a nigga want to cry now. I don't even want to talk to nobody else. Shit. God damn, uh, nigga. You ain't... Go on, go bye bye. What's the name of the dope again? <laughs> yeah, game over. Because it's game too early for this shit. It's too early for this shit. All right, girl. Game I'm over. out. We out of here. Rolling by another right, That's that's my soapbox for today. All right. For, Nikki for for crackhead president. You gonna be Nikki for crackhead president. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, I think we should have more crackheads in politics, but you know, on the other side of the crack, not acting, not like not like Marion Burry at the Vista in yeah, nineteen ninety. That's not that. That's fucked up. Okay. Uh, that bitch done set me up. <laughs> set me up. <laughs> Not like that. But crackheads like me on this side of the fence, okay? Right. Pre post crack. Good job. Well, I, I, well, this good is job. 2019 PC. Not BC. PC, nigga. <laughs> yeah, post 1986 crack. BC before crack. <laughs> AC. We got to go PC and uh, AC. Pre crack and post crack. Pre crack and post crack. All right, babe. All right. Love you, little Timmy. Love you, baby. I'll Make see you Monday. Make choices. Never. Bye. Game over, nigga. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to go. I'm, I'm about to go get some evidence. Some. I'm about to get some weed in my face. All right. Good look, you know y'all get ten percent off. <laughs> <laughs> see you. Bro. All right, baby. Bye. Bye. Y'all like and share this feed. I'm getting out of here. Uh, I love little Timmy. He's so funny. Anyway, like and share this feed. Follow me. Follow Lord Timmy. And uh, tell your friends we're here each and every weekday morning, sometime around 10 ish. Okay, between 10 and 11, depending on what's going on. But if you turn on your notifications, you'll get word when we go live. And you can catch us live or you can watch us after the fact. Hopefully, you'll catch us live so, you know, we can have more fun. We like to receive your comments. We appreciate you stopping by. If you have something that you want us to say, drop it in the comments, just like Jamon did today and broke that story about Ashanti's dad that we don't know if it's true or not. But we're interested. You know why? Because this is where we do it. We talk about anything and everything and absolutely nothing. Most of the time, the latter. But in the event. So I'm getting out of here. Because it's too early for this shit. Bye.